we got just over a month left for Sorato 9 Alsatian Licoris. So let me summarize all the important aspects of Licoris in a single video for those who are not necessarily following the news about the game closely. Welcome everyone, it's me GamerTurk, your most reliable source of Sword Art Online information and this is everything you need to know about Elicization Licorice, the upcoming JRPG taking place in Underworld, developed by Akuria, published by Bandai Namco. Number 1, first and foremost, the topic that has many people confused in regards to the story of the game. Hardcore fans are probably full aware of this since my earliest news coverage of the game, but not everyone is up to speed due to confusing language used by Bandai Namco UK and if you're looking for a more in-depth coverage you can access my full news coverage by tapping the icon on the top right. But in their earlier fact sheet, Bandai Namco UK advertised the game as a more faithful adaptation of a main canon story than you have ever seen before in the SEO Gameverse and many people took that statement as the confirmation of Elicization Liquoris being an adaptation of the story you read in the light novels or the anime, which it isn't. Elicization Liquoris takes place in the Sword Art Online Gameverse timeline consisting of Hollow Fragment, Lost Song, Hollow Realization and Fatal Bullet and is the fifth and supposedly the final game of SAO Games timeline. Bandai Namco is not particularly wrong that Licorice will be a quote unquote more faithful adaptation compared to previous games as it utilizes the story of the Human Realm arc aka up to Quinella's defeat as its prologue but even that portion has massive differences to the main canon as the circumstances in Underworld are slightly different and the Licorice original character Medina Ortinanos joins the game quite early on during Kirito and Yujo's travel towards Zakaria. All in all, Elicization Licoris is not at all a direct adaptation of the main canon with its prologue following the general course of the story aka defeat Quinella with major differences throughout and once we reach that breaking point, the game truly begins with a full-blown original story. Number 2 and I can see many people having issues with this but this is a story where you will experience from the perspective of Kirito much like all the SAO games with the exception of Fatal Bullet which I find personally to be a huge plus. You will be allowed to customize Kirito similar to the options available in Hollow Fragment and Hollow Realization but for the purposes of story you'll still be Kirito. However, unlike the Hollow games, in Elicization Licorice you will not be locked to a Kirito only gameplay. Possibly with the exception of story limitations at certain points in the game, you can use whichever character you want and in fact you can pick any 4 characters from the available roster and switch between them on the go to chain their attacks together. Speaking of the variety of characters, all characters can use all weapon types as well so you can literally play the game however you want. Number 3, speaking of weaponry, while well, Elicization Licorice does not really offer the variety of previous SAO games in terms of weapons, it still comes with a variety of weapon types, some of which are new additions to the series. The available weaponry, which as mentioned before, available for all characters, consists of one-handed longsword, rapier, dagger, mace, the newcomer weapon type, whip, katana, two-handed longsword and bows, the last one being new depending on your definition of new. It is absolutely great that you are free to spec every character however you want, but I'm still hoping for some secret weapon types here similar to Hollow Realization. SAO Games lead Yosuke Futami teased dual wielding being too hard and considering dual blades is not an underworld function, it's not surprising it doesn't show up on the screen right here. However. I can easily see it being an incarnate ability for Kirito to use later in the game. And from the looks of it, that's not even such a far-fetched assumption to make, considering Renly for example will have his own unique weaponry, double winged blades, specifically for him. So who knows, until the game potentially releases. Number 4, it may be a Kirito based story, but that doesn't mean you can't have your own character. No, I'm not talking about the pseudo Kirito customization, I'm talking about the multiplayer portion of the game. Nothing much is known about the multiplayer aspect so far of Elization Licorice. As far as we know, it is going to unlock once Quinella is defeated, so you need to have some story progression to unlock it, and it seems to be similar to Hollow Realization's multiplayer on the surface level, going hunting and questing with other people. However, the big difference is, in Elicization Licorice, you can have your custom character in multiplayer. And what really is gonna be interesting is that if you properly customize your character, as in both change the name and the appearance, your character will show up as an NPC in others' games too. 
So if you ever stroll around Centauria and see an NPC obviously not fitting in, you know that someone's OC invading your game. Number 5. Expect some surprises from the story. Not just because it's mostly an original story, but because of the take the game is having with the story itself. You'll see many unexplored parts of Underworld, plots that are completely omitted by the anime, narratives that are merely hinted at in the light novels, never to be extensively covered. Alicization Licorice will be delving into a lot of the non-published areas of Alicization's lore, with the additional supervision of SAO's author, Reki Kawahara himself. You will get to experience a whole lot more than just the Norlangarth North Empire, you will discover the entire human realm, meet new game original characters, Edith Synthesis stand from Alsatian Rising Steel will be in Licorice 2, and who knows, maybe we will see even more Integrity Knights along the way, even those who were in stasis in the main canon. Number 6, going back to the combat aspect of the game, Alicization Licorice goes back to a more JRPG style once again after the arcade shooter that was Fatal Bullet. The gameplay is quite similar to Hollow Realization, however it is much more slower and personal and there is a reason for that. The developers wanted to provide a more intricate combat system than just skill spamming and that they have achieved. For starters, you have two different combat options now, one being the physical combat with the weapon you have, the other being the sacred art system seamlessly integrated into the combat and that is the first significant portion of your skill chaining capabilities. This new system allows you to generate elements on your offhand, use a skill with your weapon and then chain a sacred art command to your skill afterwards for further damage. Also, pick your element types accordingly because each element comes with different strengths. As for your second option to chain skills, your ally members are the key. They will adapt to your combat style and you can even teach and tweak their behavior very specifically to work together with you efficiently, but you can also chain skills between characters manually by using a skill with one, changing control to your second character, chaining with that, move on to third and so on, which was one of the main reasons of slowing down the combat speed in the first place. While individual character speed is lowered, the game wants you to achieve that efficiency smartly by utilizing your entire party. Number 7. Let's go back to one of the confusion points. As things stand, Futomi's comments make it seem like War of Underworld won't be in the game, at least in the base game, which also affects the appearance of Asuna, Shinon and Leafa, as well as Gabriel Miller if he'll be in the base game at all somewhere. He and Wasago can appear without having a war arc, but that's a different topic. This is all about god accounts or rather lack thereof. According to Futami, Asuna won't be diving with the Stacia account and she is not using a converted account either. If War of Underworld won't happen, it makes sense that she won't be diving with a super account after all, since that measure was only taken to give her superior abilities to fight in the war in the first place. And also, while Shinon and Leafa are not yet officially confirmed to be in Licorice, we know they will be based on the full version of the key visual drawn by Abek that was featured in various Bandai Namco events in Asia, which happened to feature Shinon and Leafa as well. But from the looks of it, they won't be using their god accounts either. Number 8. Post-game content. Some of it is controversial, some of it is kinda pleasing. Alization Licorice will have monthly raids which will be free for everyone. We do not know much about these monthly raids, but if they're proper raid quality content that allows me to tackle challenging bosses and mechanics and multiplayer with other players, then I'll be incredibly happy. On the other hand, loot boxes and microtransactions have made it into the game as well, which is concerning to say the least. You do daily missions which grants you loot box tickets for random pools, you can't purchase loot boxes but can only purchase items directly, Bandai Namco stated that if you do all daily missions, you'll be able to get all items in these loot boxes, however, they have not yet clarified if the items will disappear after a time period, actively coercing non-daily players to purchase items before they are gone, so here's to hoping they won't disappear like a mobile game gacha. Number 9. Yujiro is confirmed to survive, however Medina's fate is shrouded in mystery. Looking back at the trailers, a whole lot of them focus very specifically on Medina and we know Kirito blames himself for some reason in this game too, which is obviously not the death of Yujiro. 
And on top of this, the opening of the game sung by the amazing Reona, who is the singing voice of Kanzaki Elsa in Alternative Gangale Online and has performed for Get Me Not, Niji no Kanatani and Till the End for the main Sword Art Online series, who's also doing a double this season by also singing Anima, the opening theme for War of Underworld Part 2. That was a long sentence that I forgot where it started. Uh, yes, the opening of the game also is a direct reference to Medina titled Scarlet, with a slash literally going through the word, separating it in two halves. So while Yujo is saved, keep your eyes on Medina. And if you're looking for a head start on the story, El Sejun Liquoris Manga has already started publishing in Japan, and I'll soon cover more of the story in future videos with SAO Wikia. And finally, number 10, let's end it nice and round, the game is coming out on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC via Steam. Sadly, at the time of this recording, a Switch version has not yet been announced, however, if you really want it on Switch, don't be surprised if a Switch version gets announced down the line, just like Halo Realization and Fatal Bullet Switch versions. Licorice is coming out on May 21st in Japan and May 22nd for the rest of the world. No, as of this recording, there is no digital pre-order option on PlayStation 4. That's it from me today, most of you who already follow me here or on Twitter probably already knew all of this stuff, so this was a video aimed towards those people who are interested but not as into it as the hardcore fans are. I hope you found the video helpful, if you like Sword Art Online or if you're looking for more in-depth content on the series, do consider subscribing and not even gonna be modest, my channel is the best place for Sword Art Online content here on YouTube, a safe haven in the middle of misinformation ocean filled with hungry foxes. Hit that subscribe button, the bell icon, the like button if you enjoyed, if you got questions I'll be in the comments, feel free to ask them and I'll do my best to help. And you can help me and my channel by checking out my merch, Land Squad Awaits, and some new merch related to Licorice coming soon. Thank you very much for being here, a huge thanks to my patrons and channel members as usual, I'll see you in the next one, until then, stay cool.